Welcome to Mass with Bob. Today we're looking at uh, bearings, the uh, compass bearing and the true bearing. And uh, we're going to, first of all, uh, draw up a, a, a compass. Okay, uh, let's just uh, draw up a compass. Okay, so hopefully uh, we know this way is north, this way is south. This is the main north south line where we take compass bearings from. And uh, okay, we have west over this way and okay, east over this way. Okay, so let's actually put a bearing line in and uh, hold on, let's put a bearing line in. Um, okay, so uh, first of all, let's just put a bearing in line over here, say somewhere, say let's make the angle say 40 degrees here. Okay, okay now that's a bearing line, so uh, say I'm at point zero and I'm I want to go to say a point P over here. Now, okay. Now, where is um, okay P from O the center here? What, or if you like, what is the bearing of P from O? Now, um, the first thing is, uh, in terms of compass bearings, we need to use the north-south line, and uh, we have to work out whether this point is actually north or south of the east-west line. And you can see here it's south, so I'm going to use the south main line from the compass. And I'm going to say, okay, we need, obviously, to work out what this angle here is. And hopefully we can see that's just 50. So the bearing would, in fact, be uh, south 50 degrees towards the west. So I'd say uh, the bearing, okay, so the, so the bearing of P, okay, from center origin, okay, in terms of compass bearings is the the first, north-south, we always use north-south first. Then we either go east or west, so we have to work out what angle we need to go east or west. And you can see here we're going 50 degrees towards the west. So that's the actual compass bearing. Now, the true bearing uh, is, in fact, measured from true north and goes, uh, if you can see, I'll just put it in here, it goes right around here. So this is the actual, what's called the, the true bearing. Uh, you can see here it's uh, going clockwise from true north and it goes through 90, another 90 and then 50. So we're going 180 uh, plus 50, so it'll actually be 230, 230 degrees true. Okay, sometimes they call these three-digit bearings or three-figure bearings. Uh, if, uh, say it was only 20 degrees, I normally quote it as 020 degrees true. Okay, so you can see here the compass bearing always goes north-south uh, and the uh, first and then you go east or west and the true bearing is always measured from true north in a clockwise direction. Okay. All right, so let's actually now look at how we are going to find north. Okay, okay we're going to now look at trying to find uh, due north uh, during the uh, daytime. Now, uh, there is a, a slight difference between the magnetic north and true north, the north pole and the magnetic north pole are slightly different. They keep changing from year to year. And if you actually do a little navigation, you need to adjust your maps and directions and things. But anyway, we're not going to go into that. Uh, we're just going to assume we're going to try and find true north. In this case, it'll be uh, uh, the, uh, I think it's the, actually the north pole and the south pole we're actually going to go try and find. OK, so first up, how do we do it? Well, the first thing is, uh, in the southern hemisphere, uh, you need to uh, let's first of all make some sort of time. Suppose it's about, say, uh, let's actually put some time in here. Say it's about 10 to, say, 4 o'clock. Okay. So it's about 10 to 4. Now, what you do in the uh, southern hemisphere, okay, is you would, uh, first of all, you'd line your 12 up with the sun. Okay. And then you'd try now bisect this angle. Okay. So you're going to bisect this angle here. Uh, and uh, basically, say it's roughly here. Let's see where it's roughly. So basically, this would be uh, true north going out that way. Okay, bisecting the angle between the hour hand and the 12, which you're pointing at the sun. Okay, so how about in the northern hemisphere? What do you do? Well, okay, so let's just um, assume it's about the same time. In this case, so, uh, okay, so it's about. Say, uh, okay, again, 10 to say roughly 4. Now, what you have to do here is you have to now line your sun up with, um, 
your hour hand. Uh, let's see if I can do that. Okay, where's the sun? Move the sun. Okay, so we need to line the sun. Okay, up with the hour hand. Okay, it's just roughly. Okay, so we now need to know. Okay, we need to put the hour hand. So the hour hand has to go towards the sun. And now we are, in fact, in the northern hemisphere, we're actually finding south when the opposite, obviously, the direction is north. So we look at the, the uh, we look at between 12 and the hour hand and bisect that, and that now is actually south in the northern hemisphere. And obviously, the other way, obviously, is north. Okay. All right. So that's in the daytime. And uh, what about nighttime? Someone asked me, and I thought, well, let's have a look at nighttime as well. Well, okay, at night time, we need to find the uh, Southern Cross in the Southern Hemis Hemisphere. Uh, we need to also locate the pointers. Um, we draw, need to draw a line right through the diagonal of the Southern Cross, and we also need to draw a line through the pointers, but it has to be the uh, perpendicular bisector. Okay, here we go. We join these two lines and then drop that to the horizon, and that's actually south. Okay, the opposite direction will be north. Now, um, sometimes they say that, um, that you know, you can, if you measure these distances, uh, one is D and one is 5D. I'll write that by a minute. But this is the celestial pole, which is actually called the south pole, the southern celestial pole, when these two lines intersect. Okay, so uh, some people actually say that the distance on the cross is D, and then you need to go about five times that distance to get to this celestial south pole. Okay. Now, sometimes if you can't see the point is... Um, Okay, now, in the Northern Hemisphere, they are very, very lucky, really. They've got what's called the, the Northern Star, and uh, that's uh, really, well, it's coming off the edge of the cup of the Big Dipper. So you will actually need to uh, find the Big Dipper to start with, and uh, you'll need to uh, draw a line, uh, basically, along the edge of the cup, uh, and if you follow that up into the... Uh, night sky you should find a, a bright star uh, it's called the uh, northern star okay and uh, or polaris i think they call it and um you if you oh, let's actually draw that first here we go it's, there's the okay this is the north star and uh, obviously if you drop that down to the horizon you're actually going to find north <laughs> so they're quite lucky up there but uh, the north uh, direction is quite easily found just as long as you can locate this uh, northern star so you We'll need to find what's called the, the Big Dipper. You'll need to know a bit of celestial uh, bodies or names, names of some of the celestial bodies, I suppose you could say. Okay, so uh, there we have it. We have, uh, it's just that's north is pretty easy. But um, if you look into the northern uh, hemisphere, into the sky, you will actually see that that north star is quite bright and it's on the bottom of a tip of uh, another body up there. I'm not too sure what that's called up there, but there's another set of stars up there. Uh, above it, but it's at the southern tip of that one. Okay, so remember, find the Big Dipper, go along the edge of the cup, and you'll find the North Star. Okay, all right, let's have a look at some problems. Okay, well, let's actually have a look at uh, some bearing type problems. Well, the first, first thing, the easiest thing to do is draw three points. I always say draw point, three points, call this A, put B over here somewhere, B, and put C down here somewhere. Okay, C. So first of all, draw uh, three points, A, B, and C, anywhere on your page. Then uh, put in your north-south lines. Okay, so north. Okay, I'm going to cross a bit. Okay. And then uh, north-south for each of these points. So we just go north, south, north, south. Okay, so the first thing I think... Okay, so this is obviously north in each of these cases. And they're all parallel. I think that's the first thing to realise. They're all parallel. Okay. And obviously south is in the opposite direction. We all know this. Uh, south here. Okay. South, obviously, over here is to the west. Okay. To the east. Okay. So we go through. Uh, okay. Obviously, over here is the east. Okay. We're having a bit of trouble with the pen here, but... Okay, this is east and obviously west. Okay. Now, what we now do is we now join up the three points. Okay, so what we do is we end up getting, okay, let's actually do this. Uh, with the line. Just join the three points. 
Okay. All right. Now, what we're going to do is mark in some angles. Now, suppose, uh, okay, uh, we walked along a, say, a bearing of, say, 120 degrees. One, two, zero degrees true from A to get to B. And then uh, we went, uh, suppose we went south, uh, say, this goes south 60 degrees, so 60 degrees here towards the west from B to get to C. And then uh, from C, uh, A was, say, uh, north 20 degrees towards the west. So it would be 20 degrees here or, say, 70 degrees here. Okay. So I think the first thing to realize now is, okay, we want to try and work out the bearings of uh, all the points from each other. Okay, so we know that obviously B, uh, from A, the bearing of B would be 120 degrees uh, true. Uh, or, in terms of compass bearings, okay, so let's actually write this down. Okay, so from A, okay, the be okay, the, okay, the bearings, okay, all right. Okay. So, of B from A. Okay, of B from A. Okay, so that is, where's B? That's a, obviously, B is over here. Here's B. Okay, it's on a true bearing of 120 degrees. That's pretty easy. One, okay, oops, let's actually write it in the pin. Okay, it will be 120 degrees true. Now, what will be the compass bearing of B from A? Well, uh, okay, so let's have a quick look. Well, it'll be going up this way. It's south, uh, so many degrees towards the east. Okay, so we remember we use the north-south for the bearing, and we are below the east-west line, so we are going south, so many degrees towards the east. How many? Well, we know there'd be 30, so it has to be about, say, 60 degrees. So it'll be south, Okay, oops. Uh, so, okay. South, 60 degrees towards the east. That would be the compass bearing of B from A. How about of C from B? Hold on. Okay, of C from B. So we're at... Uh, B, and we're trying to look towards C, well, we can see that, uh, where would that be? Of, so we're going, the true bearing will be around this way, okay, so it'll be uh, 90, 90, and 60, so that would be, what, 180, so about 240 degrees true. So let's write that in, okay, so it'll be 240 degrees true. How about the compass bearing? Well, this one's not too bad because we've got a uh, south 60 degrees towards the west. We can actually just see that directly. We don't have to calculate any other angles. So it's south 60 degrees towards the west. So we can just that first up. Okay. So how about of A from C? Okay. Of A from C. Now we can see. Uh, okay. Let's have a look. It's a fairly right around to there. Wow. So the true bearing coming from north going clockwise is practically all the way there bar about 20 degrees. So it's going to be 340 degrees. That would be what 300 and oops, I keep writing in this wrong pen here but I'll just go back to my usual pen. So it's going to be 340, 340 degrees true, the true bearing. And how about the compass bearing? Okay, so we are, we've only got a 20 degree uh, north to, from the north towards the west, so it's going to be north 20 degrees towards the west. So it'll be north 20 degrees towards the west. Okay, now obviously I can also do uh, of, okay, B from C, so I can actually change my perspective and go back the other way, but I think we'll just uh, stop here. Uh, shortly. And uh, but the first thing I just want to point out too is there's a couple of things we should be aware of. There is in fact some really amazing things here. In here they are co-interior. Okay, so we know if we wanted to find out some of these other angles for instance. Uh, okay, what would, uh, let's actually, this one here must be, uh, let's write it in red, 
would be 120 plus what is 180. Okay, so that's going to be 60 degrees in there. So these would be from this co-interior section in here, okay, because we know co-interior angles are supplementary. So we can work out most of these angles. Uh, so let's have a look. What, how about another set of co-interior? Well, look, if we look here, we've got co-interior here as well. And how about here? We've even got co-interior coming down this way as well. So we can actually work out most of these angles quite easily. Okay, so we're, but we are going to use the idea of co-interior angles are supplementary. But I'll just leave it for there for the time being, and uh, I'll let you try and work out what the other bearings are.